I'm just gonna talk about the second thing that the world has to do to save the planet's wildlife, and that is really solving this specific problem. And that problem is figuring out how to more efficiently store electricity and transport it. Because like I said earlier, climate change is ultimately the greatest threat to the planet's wildlife. A lot of people argue that there's lots of reasons why we have not yet solved the problem of climate change or at least started to reduce emissions. But I think one thing that is true that I think most people would agree on is that if we could way more efficiently store electricity and transport it, we would just be in a much better position because as far as I know, alternative energy in a lot of places in the world is actually really efficient when it comes to its production. The tough thing about it is just being able to store it efficiently and transport it. Ideally, at the end of the day, what people want to do is they want to make money and they want to do what is the most economically efficient thing to do. So if the technological innovation comes into existence so that going on alternative energy literally is the most economically efficient thing to do, um, like pretty much all over the world, then I think the world will follow doing that. The problem is we are not there yet. So we really need to come up with a system that focuses on the innovation of that specific problem. And this is another controversial opinion that I have, but I would say if you look at the best innovation in society, usually it comes from a free market system. And that is not to say that the government should not play a role. The government, I absolutely think, needs to play a role. But in a free market where there's competition, where there's money to be made, people are gonna produce the most amount possible to, uh, to make that money. Now look at this, we got Griffin vultures. Really interesting. I saw a lot of griffin vultures in southern Spain in the wild on my birding trip. That's pretty cool. When I see giraffes and elephants, all I can think of is how cool it would be to see these guys in the African savanna. I've never been to Africa. It is honestly the next place I want to check off my list. And there are some flamingos. Those are the Caribbean flamingos. I saw a different one in the wild on my birding tutor in southern Spain a few weeks ago. It was super cool. Now this place I'm actually going birding tomorrow. This is a cool delta right outside Barcelona. Some sea lions over there. I don't know the species of the sea lions. I've seen a lot of sea lions in my life around San Diego. So the next thing that the world has to do in order to save wildlife is to shift to a more plant-based diet. And I know this is another controversial thing to say because a lot of people really love meat. A lot of people don't think that meat is that bad for the environment. But according to the science, a plant-based diet just has way lower environmental impacts than a meat-based diet. When it comes to wildlife specifically, the biggest threat to wildlife up until this point in history is habitat loss. And a huge part of that is agriculture. And what confuses a lot of people is a lot of times they are clearing land for crops like soy or corn or whatever. A lot of times the land is not for cattle grazing, but a lot of times the crops that are cultivated on that land, if it's soy or corn or, or whatever else, it is being fed to cattle. So overall, if we ate less meat, then we wouldn't need to farm as many plant crops. Now, what is the solution in order to shift the world to eating more of a plant-based diet than meat-based diet? I don't know. In America, we have this culture where we just love meat. And to be honest, I like meat too. It's not so much about being a strict vegan or vegetarian. It's just about reducing the amount of meat you're consuming, but especially beef. Beef is by far the worst. It's worse than pork overall. And it's way worse than chicken and fish. And since I mentioned fish, seafood is obviously a huge issue as well. Super complicated. I think we do need to overall reduce the amount of protein that we get from seafood too. But yeah, I don't know what the solution is to this. I know that if we came up with some laws in the United States that restricted the amount of meat that people could eat, people would go absolutely crazy. I'm getting a good look at a couple of hippos here. Hippos are just such amazing animals. Again, inspires me to go on a safari to Africa. On to the fourth thing that the world needs to do to save the planet's wildlife. This is something that a lot of people aren't really talking about, but I do believe it is gonna get a lot more attention in the coming years, is the genetic engineering of species that already live out in nature. And the reason I say this is because as technology improves, I do believe that genetically engineering living things, genetically engineering animals is going to be that much easier as time goes on. 
it is also essential because it's going to be harder and harder to preserve species in their environments because their environments are changing um, due to us really but they're inevitably they are going to change so with climate change for example no matter what happens even if we cut out all fossil fuels right now the climate's still going to change no matter what um, so what we have to do is we have to work with the effects of climate change also, invasive species are everywhere all over the world out competing native species. It's just going to get harder and harder to control all those invasive species. So what we got to do, we got to work with the existing species that we are trying to save. And it might just come down to literally like genetically splicing them and introducing individuals back out into the wild so that those individuals are more likely to survive in this new changed environment. And this is already happening actually. One great example is with coral reefs. What they're doing now is they are starting to genetically engineer corals so that they are more tolerable to warmer temperatures because what a huge problem is, is that corals, uh, they can't tolerate warmer temperatures as the temperatures of the ocean rise. It's just really bad for the corals and it makes it so they go into bleaching and it kills them. And so what they're doing is they're gene splicing these corals, uh, reintroducing them to the wild population so those genes spread. And then what they're finding is they're able to help these populations of corals. And I think this peacock agrees with me. I love it how in zoos they got the peacocks just walking around all over the place. <laughs> but anyways, that's just one example, but there's all kinds of ways that you could genetically engineer wildlife so that it's more likely to survive in an environment where climate change is taking its toll or where you know it's being out competed by a new invasive species or where it just has to survive in a new type of habitat because its old habitat was destroyed and this of course raises a moral dilemma because at the end of the day are you really actually saving the original species or are you just introducing you know this fabricated type of animal out into the environment that's not actually representative of, of the species to begin with but my opinion on this is that you know, it's better to have a fabricated animal that somewhat resembles the animal that is going extinct than something that is just completely extinct. So anyways, post your opinion down below. I'm wondering to hear what you guys think. Now, the fifth thing I'll mention that I think the world needs to do in order to save the world's wildlife is more ecotourism. And ecotourism to me means tourism where people are going to travel to places to view wildlife, to view nature, and also doing it in a way that is considered environmentally sustainable, which is a long conversation, what exactly that means. But basically, I think that as long as it is done in the right way, it will benefit local wildlife, it will also benefit the people, it will benefit the environment as a whole. And I think that there are quite a few great examples of this. Um, you know, Costa Rica is maybe the best example. Basically, that country has just dumped a ton of money into preserving its wildlife, preserving its natural areas, and developing a tourist industry around that. Costa Rica is basically a perfect example of a country that has used tourism to benefit both people and the environment. Economically, overall, from top to bottom, um, they are in the best spot out of any other country in Central America. And there's the question, is ecotourism actually good for wildlife? And I've talked about this in other videos, and it can definitely be done in a way that's not good for wildlife. But again, if it's done in the right way, I think it is good for the wildlife and I think that the potential for more ecotourism in the world is absolutely massive because in the modern day of age as it gets easier and easier to travel places more and more people are traveling more and more people are discovering places through the internet through social media but still ecotourism just comprises a small minority there's really not that many people going to places just to view the nature it's mostly people just looking to explore the culture and other human aspects. So I think that if the world can come up with ways to expand the ecotourism industry so that people who have the money in developed countries will travel to developing countries in the tropics where there's the most biological diversity, if we can get you know that transfer of money from people in the developed world to people in the developing world through ecotourism, it's both gonna bring up the people from the developing world economically, and it's going to help preserve biological diversity and save the Earth's wildlife. I'm gonna head out of the zoo here, but I have one more important point that I wanna say 
So the last thing I just want to say before closing out this video is that it is super important that we get the developing world, that we get their standard of living up. That is the only way that I think that we can really save the world's wildlife because at the end of the day, people are not going to save their local environment. They're not going to save the wildlife around them unless they can take care of the things that should be their priority. Like for example, feeding their family, staying healthy, having the basic needs in life. There's all these things in the developed world that we just take for granted because it is very easy as someone who has grown up in the developed world, who has had easy access to clean water, to food, who has just had all these opportunities that we just take for granted. It is super easy for us just to think about saving the world's wildlife, to have the luxury of thinking about what needs to go into saving a panda or a tiger or whatever. What we have to remember is we have to put ourselves in the shoes of people who might be struggling to put food on the table every single day. How are you gonna ask those people to do things to worry about saving the bird in their backyard when they have all this other stuff to worry about? The reason I say this is I have heard plenty of talk out there about this idea that economic growth is not a good thing because we're using up too many resources on the planet and you know if everyone did have a standard of living as high as people in the developed world then we would do a lot more environmental damage and we would destroy a lot more things natural treasures like the world's wildlife and i just disagree with that i think that it needs to be the opposite overall the standard of living for the world needs to be raised the key is we need to do it in a way in which we preserve the environment in which we coexist harmoniously with the world's wildlife in which we manage our resources efficiently and one key to doing this will be technological innovation and again this is going to be a controversial opinion by me but the more economic growth there is from top to bottom the more there will be to go around the key is we gotta make sure that those people in the developing countries do get a slice of that economic pie. But anyways, those are my thoughts and I just think that we need to have a conversation. So I know a lot of people have different opinions about different things, but post your opinion in the comments below. So remember that exploring nature is always an adventure. Take that green pill, I will catch you in the next one.